on this episode, I found Pedro. Hey everybody, this is Gary Vay Nurchuk, and this is episode 270 of the Ask Gary V Show, and this one's fun for me um, because this is not my normal demeanor to actually uh, have somebody on the show that is interacting with me more in my real life, in my Gary Vaynerchuk life, more than my Gary V life. Uh, the gentleman we have in front of uh, us today is an individual that has fascinated me from the day that I met him because of my, as when you're an entrepreneur, playing in the corporate America landscape like I am as the CEO of VaynerMedia, you often disrespect corporate America because you don't understand them the same way corporate America disrespects entrepreneurship. But very, very early on, uh, Pedro Erpier, who is with me, and I'll let him tell you a little bit about himself and what he cares about, which I'm curious to hear what he cares about, um, caught my attention in a real way. I've really enjoyed the last seven years of VaynerMedia because there's two or three handfuls now of people that have really stood out for me that I say to myself, oh, okay, you know, and, and Pedro, if he's transparent, will tell you, every time I have dinner with him and we have actual short-term business talk, whatever we have to address, somewhere we're five minutes in, I'm like, okay, cool, but in the future, when, you know, when we buy businesses and brand, like, he's a really, really intelligent guy, but more importantly, intuitive, which is something that I think all of you know that I value. I'm excited to have him on the show. I wanted to go a little bit more in the uh, business landscape, and so everybody on Facebook, put in your phone numbers. We're gonna do calls, and uh, please uh, ask your questions around some of the stuff that I think you're about to hear from me and Pedro over the next five to seven minutes, and we'll go in that direction. Pedro, why don't you tell the Vayner Nation Everybody sure. who's watching, a little bit about yourself and yeah. what the hell are you doing here? Thanks for having me here, man. It's, it's great being here, right? We met each other like seven years ago already. I was thinking about it. Insane. Uh, yeah, so we, uh, we just started up this, you know, ZX Ventures. I'm responsible for ZX Ventures now here. You know, Spell here, that for me and everybody. ZX. 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 Just one ZX. Yep. You, got, you guys choose. Yes, no worries. Uh, ZXVentures.com. So we are we're sort of the disruptive growth arm of, uh, of Anheuser Busch and Bev. Uh, we started two and a half years ago. Uh, is it is it PE or is it VC or it's how a is it? Combination of everything It's PE, VC, and and actually some of our organic uh, businesses are also in there. Oh, so uh, so incubator, VC, and PE. You everything. can buy brands, you can invest in brands, or you can start brands or services that are directly complementary to the overall Anheuser Busch, Budweiser, Stella kind of businesses. Yeah, exactly. So so I'll mean the- you're not going to start an umbrella company. Yeah. I'm asking. Hey, on, our, on our organic side, there are business units behind, so that's more of a holding company that has business beside it, uh, under them. Uh, and then VC is a regular VC, right? So that, that's a little bit what we're trying to do. As you know, Gary, I mean, as companies, they, you know, they get big. Uh, it's very hard. They were pioneers at some point in time. That's why they became leaders. That's why they, you know, they, they lead their, their respective industry. But it becomes harder over time for them to keep being ahead of the curve, being innovative and things like that. Super hard to move. Uh, you know, a battleship, right? Exactly. So the, the way that we try to structure ourselves in order to be always ahead of the curve is to have this group, which is a bit of a, you know, independent group uh, within the organization. And really the mandate is very broad, right? How can we always keep ahead of the curve? How can we disrupt ourselves uh, before anybody else does? And, and that's a little bit of our, our mandate, right? And to, to introduce myself a little yeah. bit, you know, being a... Uh, Where this, were you born? Yeah, Brazil. Yes. So I was born in Brazil. You see that? Yeah, Pelé, Pelé, man. <laughs> I have, uh, I'm proud of that. I've, uh, I've, uh, I haven't been living there since I'm 18, so I moved to, you know, to the UK for school and then, you know, moved for ABI for a bunch of countries. So when we uh, when integrated with Interbrew in Belgium, moved to Belgium, moved to Canada, my third time here in New York. So exciting, exciting times. So you've, you, your whole professional career has been within the 3G, ABI, InBev landscape? Yeah, InBev. I started at InBev yep. uh, in 2000, right after school, my high school sweetheart. So uh, that's, yeah, the only company I worked for. And, and so for a lot of you who are watching who are in the entrepreneurial land, this may be foreign, but for anybody in the finance landscape or bigger business, you know, 3G, and this is something I have, you know, but a lot of people don't know, 3G, an incredible investment vehicle that buys companies and operates them, now owns Kraft Heinz and Burger King and, and uh, obviously the Budweiser business and the other brands around it globally here in the US, bought SAB Miller, like just a monster company. Um, 
is probably the, one of the companies that most inspired me to start VaynerMedia. For a lot of you that know about VaynerMedia, my ambition is to build the greatest marketing machine and then buy brands and run it through. 3G came in and created a level of practicality in the business world that I think was grossly missing. And, and for the people that know the story, uh, incredibly entrepreneurial Brazilian gentleman who started this company, a lot of it is about cost cutting and running efficiencies and the kind of like the pot shot. The same way people pot shot me like oh, I'm a charlatan and a self promoter because you don't like what's actually happening and you gotta find something. They'll make jokes about oh at 3G you print on both sides of the paper and the executives fly coach middle C and there's these things but what they really did was cut out an ungodly amount of wasted money and really look at businesses for businesses uh, at a level that has never been done before at an efficiency and scale and ambition that's never been done before and it's truly one of the machines that I most admire, uh, which is why I really love the fact that Vayner's gotten to work. Uh, but it's tough, right? Like, like they're gangsters, like just like Vayner, like people get fired and agencies are, like I, it, no question, the account that I'm always like, it can be gone tomorrow, even though two days ago there was a great meeting. And there's a level of that capitalism that I think is, uh, Really refreshing. I look at it, you know, as a proud American, though I wasn't born in America, as a funny thing because I think the entrepreneurial spirit of the machine Mm -hmm. has made a lot of people uncomfortable in America. And I always make fun of my corporate friends who like cry about it. I'm like, you're not a capitalist. You only like it on your terms. So it's been a very successful run, uh, and clearly you've uh, enjoyed it. Now, here's my question. You've got kind of the Navy SEALs unit mm-hmm. to the mothership. Yeah. Has, how does the mothership look at it? Like, what, as an executive, for the people out there, not, a lot of my audience is entrepreneurs. They're people that want to be entrepreneurs yeah. or are entrepreneurial <clears throat> within big organizations. Has it been, you know, how many, three years into it now? Yeah, two and a half. Has it been, you know, and obviously, look, they wouldn't have given you this, and I don't know all these details. I'm kind of like, you know, you know me well, like, I'll shoot it straight. You wouldn't have gotten this opportunity if, People didn't have a lot of respect for you. You're young. How old are you? I'm 40 now. I just turned. You look good, man. The <laughs> hair is fucking unbelievable. I'm super pissed right now. Um, you know, you wouldn't have been given this at bad at 37, you know, if, if there wasn't a lot of confidence. But here's my question. I think this can bring the biggest value to the audience. Has the mothership's interaction with this Navy SEALs, knowing you guys wanted to let it independent, has it worked the way you thought? What's been different? What, what's the advice, yeah. since this is a show and not us having dinner, what's the advice for people that are trying to make something spirited and nimble work with good autonomy, and I know you have that, because I know enough from afar and I'm trying to frame it up for everybody, but still is part of yeah. the thing. Yeah. I think, Gary, just to stack back a little bit, you know, a lot of people, I think, misunderstand a little bit, be it the 3Gs, you know, our, our you know, Brazilian shareholders and our Belgian shareholders. These guys were truly pioneers, right? And they were really, really ahead of the curve. And that's why, you know, these companies really became, Huge. you know, amazing companies. And if you think about it today, they've always been in the business for the long run. You know, they, they never pay really like the, you know, Activist the, the PF, flip it. Flip it, whatever seven that years. is. Exactly. So they, they, are, they are committed for the very, very long run. And, and I, I mean, we carry a legacy of centuries, right? So like our first brands are from the 13th century, you know? So we, we really have a, a mentality of leaving a legacy for the next generation. A responsibility. You know? Exactly, exactly. It, it's a huge responsibility, right? We really have to take the flag, you know, to the next post in a much better, uh, you know, that we were giving uh, that flag. And, and, and they really, what they try to do is to instill a culture of ownership, you know, of entrepreneurialism within our, our organization, things that are very rare to see in big organizations, right? So, so I think here, you know, they are all for the, we are all for the long term, and, and we really believe that this ownership mentality is something that is very differentiated in our company, and, and we're trying to, to take forward. So when you think about our mandate, right, which is to disrupt ourselves before anybody else does, when you have a company that people are more Before you go anywhere. Yeah. I love that. How much of a mandate is that? It's it, when you say your mandate is like I don't know how you guys do it. Like is that the big mandate? Yeah, yeah. Because and, you know and, that's my favorite. Like that's yeah. the only way I live my life. I'm going to put myself out yeah. of business before somebody else does it for me. Yeah, exactly. No, and it's real, right? There are a lot of things that we are doing for for a long time, for example, when you think about the you know the US business craft you know, was great for the beer industry, right? If you think about it, starting in craft the 80s. Beer. Yeah, craft beer, premiumized the, the category, brought, you know, n- new drinkers into, the, into the, the category and all of that. But it took us, you know, 20 years to go there and embrace, 
you know, this amazing variety that people are offering, you know, and the creativity that the guys have and all of that, you know. So, and, so and it's a delicate balance for you in that world, right? Because you don't want to take away the spirit of the youth of it being part of the big machine. Exactly. I think Goose Island, for, as a consumer from afar, has been the best execution that I've seen that pulse-wise, I have no idea about the numbers and who's doing well what or yeah. not, but that was, I mean, I grew up in the liquor business. Goose Island was clearly a craft beer, but it absolutely, it feels, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at you guys too, like living life, like feels like a big brand now with a craft angle yeah. because you've given it huge distribution. It, it's got big branding now, um, but the quality of the beer is off the charts. Like, would you say, I'm asking you, is Goose Island a great execution of that? Yeah, yeah I, th- I think it is. You know, I, I love that phrase, right, Gary. Right? I love that phrase that says that, uh, you know. You don't know, hold on, Pedro, you don't know Goose Island? No, I know Goose Island. I, I think the quality has tarnished a little bit. You do? Yeah. So let's talk about this. Let's put pressure on Pedro. You feel, yeah. do you feel like, beca- like because I, you, do, now this is branding. Do you feel like if you didn't know a bigger company bought it that you would never know that I think you've, and you're just being no. a little bit of like I think you've a given modern me a, millennial? A Goose Island today and a Goose Island three, four years ago, they taste different. Great. So we're going to do this. This is going to happen in the future at, at, Actually, I don't know if a beer four years, with, we can't really do it. It's not like wine. All right, we'll get back to you. But this is what you guys, this is, listen, this is what, this is, I was just in another meeting and the guy said, it's amazing that next year you're gonna meet with all of your employees for 15 minutes twice a year. This is something I've been talking about. My open door policy is not working. Not working. And I'm gonna meet with everybody for 15 minutes. And he goes, wow, everybody's gonna be so excited. I said, no, they're not. I go, 200 are gonna be super excited and think it's awesome because they like me or they believe in me. 200 are gonna be neutral and are gonna take it for what it is and then are gonna like me because they're gonna be like, okay, this was a real meeting, he, you know. But 400 are gonna be cynical because we're bigger now and they're gonna think I'm just doing it to position myself as a good guy or checking the box or I don't really give a shit about Jake. I just feel like I'm doing it for myself, not to, this is just what happens. You get people like Andy who are fucking cynical. I'm not cynical. <laughs> what, you're a, you're just, this is your opinion. I, I legitimately, legitimately think they taste differently. Okay, cool. Do yeah. they? Is the formula different? No, I think, uh, you know, the, truth, you know? The, the, truth, know. the truth is in the glass, right? And consumers, they actually vote with their wallets every day, right? And right. Goose Island today is five times the size yeah. of what it was in the past. Be and, careful. That's a very cute thing to say I, as a big business because you have much more distribution of machine. Like, and listen, there's another thing that's happening but with if, even if you There's take so a, much if, option Even if you take now. a look factually, Please, factually, factually. Factually. That's what I want to know. Is the formula the yeah. same or did you? Or was there changes because no, you had to hit scale? Exactly the same. The guys still have all the freedom, you know, in Chicago to do, uh, you know, to do whatever they want. Exactly. And, and Pedro, you talk, you hold on, talk hold to on. the brewery. You have to so be careful. This is super on the record. I'm super curious yeah. about it. You may not know. There's, I don't know 90% of what's happening outside this office. Do you know for fact, or are you just like, you're making assumptions? Do you know for fact, because I really want to make fun of him. Yeah. Do, do you know for fact that the formula is 100% the same as four years ago? Or is there a chance at scale they've had to do certain Gary, things? Or do you know that they have full autonomy in Chicago? They have full autonomy Got in it. Chicago. So you're not so positive, if they, right. If they even change it, I, what can I assure them. you yeah. is that yeah, nobody from ABI yeah. went there and, and you know, asked them to change the formula, Andy? right? I agree with what you said, though. That they, I think they have done a really good marriage of it's still a corporate craft. That's super not interesting anymore. What's interesting is, did <laughs> no, the formula change and did your perception change because of the dynamic? But you have to understand, you know I love this shit. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. I'll give you an example. Like like blind wine tastings. When Opus One, when, you know, how many people here know Opus One? Anybody? Yeah. Thank you, Johnny. Opus One, very big time wine from California, very famous wine. When tasted in the 80s and 90s and even to this day, at a restaurant and you open and order Opus One from Smith and Walensky's and it's Opus One and everybody's sitting around that knows a little bit about wine and they drink it, phenomenal. When in brown paper bags, nobody knows what it is and you're tasting one seven wines, Opus One, even the last three vintage, I always do this because I'm fascinated by this. I'm not trying to pick on Opus One, just facts. When I put Opus One in blind tastings, it almost always comes in last place. Perception. Is yeah. reality. Yeah. Okay. I, I know you're not, which I respect, because I know you very well, and so I'm curious. I'm dying to get some of these answers, but nonetheless, Pedro. So, understood. Be disrupt ourselves. We went on a huge tangent. Disrupt ourselves yeah. before we get disrupted. Yeah. AKA, you guys are on the fucking offense. Mm-hmm. That's what we're trying to do. No shit. Yeah. 
It's super interesting. So what's the biggest thing you've learned? You knew about, listen, being from Brazil, the 3G thing must have sat on a real pedestal, even as a kid. Clearly that's why you went and worked there. What, what have you learned in the 17 years that is different than what you thought you were walking into? It's a very different world, Gary, because uh, we, we came, when, when I was starting the company in Brazil, right? Back in Brazil in the 80s, we didn't have beer to sell, so whoever could produce the most, the most beer would win in the marketplace, right? Then it moved to be like a sales and distribution game, you know, where if you could get you know, to a bar and restaurant first, then the guy next to you, you will win. And now, now it's all about the consumer, you know, if you really like distribution, stable stakes. Everything's, everything's, been, everything's been commoditized, right? So now it's the battle. Exactly. The so, now, so now you have to be, and again, that's my that's point, you know, period. the truth is in the glass, right? At that's the right. end, if you don't have the, you know, the best product, you know, you don't, you don't go there and, and win, right? So that's the interesting but, but, but thing. Pedro, on that note, like, and again, because I'm deeply in this, like in beverages and consumer products, yes and no, right? So for example, uh, the, the, one of the video executions we did for Budweiser once was to blind taste people. Mm-hmm. And they loved it. Yeah. I, I'm going back to the Opus One story. I'm going back to this character over here thinking that Goose Island's not as good four years later. Yeah. Like, you know, like, I'm fa- I don't know if being the best product in the glass is always the right answer, yeah. especially when brands are mature or narratives are created. Mm-hmm. Look at Budweiser globally. Dominating. Booming, yeah. Booming. But in the mature market like the United States, it has the legacy, and so, it, you know, branding is fascinating. Yeah. Thoughts? I, you know, if you take a look at our, even our craft brewers, right? Yes. The thing on the occasion that they have the beers, they love, I mean, the, the guys from Tim Barrel, you know, when we met them, actually their Friday beer was Natty Light, you know, because there was a, a light <laughs> beer, they thought it was like cheaper, a beer, and that's the, the brand that they will go to on a, on a Friday. It's People also say, cool. Like, you're, you're, you're a craft, Natty Light you're a craft cool. brewer, how, how are you drinking Natty Light? You know, they're like, this is one of the best beers that we have for the right occasion, right? So I think it really depends if you think about it. I mean, to brew a great lager is 10 times more difficult to brew any, any ale. It let's takes, bounce, takes let's, let's bounce the out of the beer world. For, I apologize because yeah. I want to I get a couple things in. And get your phone numbers in. We're about to take questions. Make sure. This is a great opportunity for people that are in the corporate environment. As a matter of fact, in the Facebook feed, say that you work in a corporation because I'd love to get this episode into that thematic because we're always doing entrepreneurship and startup and motivation. This is a rare opportunity to deal with a serious executive and on the cusp of the game and so, and obviously with VaynerMedia, so much my interest. What about the rest of the, how much do you get to, are you completely kind of thematically within an ABI world and more importantly, do you get to look at what's going on with but you know, with uh, Burger King or Tim Hortons or Popeyes or Kraft Heinz, are you curious about it as an overall thing? And then more even importantly, how about consumer packaged goods and food and beverage around the world? What's interesting to you? What are themes that are yeah. less about the story and more about your, you know, I love your point of view. What, what's happening out there that's most fascinating to you? Forget about you as a human, yeah. as you think about the next 40 years of opportunity, like what's interesting out there? Yeah, I, I think the, you know, I take a look at a lot of CPGs, you know, and companies out there. We love to, Consumer packaged goods for all the entrepreneurs. We we love to take a look at it. You know what what are the challenges that other people have and what they how they are trying to address it. So CPGs in general, you know, all of them are kind of you know being under pressure, right? Be yes. it because of the uh, you know the new retail environment with Amazon and everything. Be it because of you know, small because brands. Of this. Hey Alexa, buy my soap. Did you want me to find soap? Yes. Got it. I mean, this is a, buy, hey Alexa, buy this. Hey Alexa, buy this. I mean, that's it. I just bought Dove Men's Soap. Order placed. By the way, I can now send you notifications about future shipping updates. You know, and even watching you guys and even watching Seth right now, I don't think people understand what the fuck is actually coming. Yeah. Like, your face is blown off. Alexa, stop. (laughs) <laughs> like Seth, your face just fell off, your face. That's crazy, yeah. right? Like imagine brushing your teeth in the morning, remembering that you need socks and saying in your bathroom, hey Google, hey Apple, hey Alexa, hey Facebook, or whatever else comes out, I need. And now the question becomes, why was that Dove? And who has the power? You think end caps at retail at Walmart are powerful? Fucking Amazon. Why did they choose that? How much do you pay to be the first result? You think Google AdWords are expensive? Like, what do people think is coming, Pedro? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, we, uh, we think that this is gonna be a, yesterday I was having a discussion on, on Walmart versus versus Amazon on Let that one. Let me save you the discussion. 
Walmart's out of business. It's not out of business for the next three years, five years, but buying Jet.com and renting that guy for a while is not gonna pull it off. This is a DNA cultural thing. It's why I believe in, you know, when I hear you say destruction. It's technology versus warehouses, right? It's just culture, man. It's just, it's just, you know, disrupt yourself before somebody else does it. It's just third generation Waltons. It's just the game it is. And it was an incredible run. And Mazel Tov, just like JC Penney. So let me, let me ask like, you a question. Please. What do you do if you're in Walmart shoes? In, your, in whose shoes? Walmart shoes. I take an unbelievable loss over the next five years on Wall Street to give us a prayer from an M&A standpoint and a culture standpoint to compete. Homegrown talent, not renting a $3 billion jet deal, right? You know, like buying people, like, you know why 3G has a chance to win and why I watch it and why I think about what I'm doing next? Because they keep bringing younger partners who can be hungry and disrupt and grow and entrepreneurial. That's not what Walmart did. Walmart doubled down on the past. We're gonna open up more stores. This and that. The internet's not coming. Amazon was happening in their face. Everyone's like, oh yeah, they bought Jet.com. What the fuck were they doing in 2012? And 2009, and 207, and 204, and 201. Game over, man. Gotta sometimes, be early, right? Sometimes it's too late. Yeah. So you guys and every other of your competitors have to care about Walmart versus Amazon today. But man, when that fucking Whole Foods shoe dropped, I was smiling cheek to cheek. Because I was like, you don't get it. You trade on what's in front of you right now. Do you know what the fuck I just did? I just bought soap. I mean, like, like you, you just, but right? Like, you have to understand that. What I just did used to mean I had to go downstairs, go somewhere, go to Dwayne Reed, and that's in New York City. In, in Jersey, where I grew up, get in a car, drive, go to fucking ShopRite or CVS. That took me 45 minutes. Seven minutes if you had a great location. 15, 22. Time is the fucking asset. Yeah, it's what's, a- what's more ca- scary, try buying an iPhone charger, right? Who's, who's gonna be selling you the iPhone charger? Right, and, and if you, let's see. Hey Alexa, buy an iPhone charger. Okay. Now, here's where it gets interesting. What came up is Amazon's basics lightning USB cable. Exactly. Exactly. Hey Alexa, buy this. Just buying shit here on the Ask Gary Vee <laughs> show today. <laughs> no, but again, we're giving a real education here. And I'm, Alexa, stop. If you're, if you're a real not, commodity, you are, you are even more in trouble, right? Everybody's a commodity because I said iPhone charger and they didn't give me an Apple product which cost three times more at the Apple store over in Midtown that would take me 47 minutes to get to right now. The shit's gonna be here, and in about eight minutes, AKA a year from now, that's gonna be here in an hour. It's not tomorrow. Like, what do people think is happening? So anyway, I, I think this is the greatest era of disruption that we've ever seen, you know that. It's why I'm eating shit and building an agency to like build me the leverage to be the complement of whoever looks like your companies and a couple of others that understand how to do the business efficiencies. The marketing and branding and strategy around technology efficiencies do not exist. And it's a very interesting time. Yeah, for sure. We bought soap and an iPhone charger One while doing the show. One from Amazon. One, that's right. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's do our first question, do a phone call. So what, are you focusing a lot on microbrews? Yeah, we're focusing, we have like four you know, business areas. So we're focusing on e-commerce a lot. E-commerce. We focus on- Which has, has challenge with alcohol. I know all about that exactly. in the US. Especially in the US. Yep. Uh, we have craft beers. So internationally, all over the world, we manage that. Yep. We have home brewing. Yes. Uh, we also, outside of the U.S., we have a retail area. So we are uh, like, we, we started like 300 bars all over the world. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. That's. Uh, I think know, that's smart. We really, uh, in this, we in the experience economy, that's right? So people, people don't want to just buy the product. People want to buy the whole experience, and that's what, what we are. What countries are you guys focusing on that? We have in a bunch of countries. We're having seven countries now. Which uh, ones? We have retail experiences. So now we have Brazil, Mexico, Argentina. We have it in in the U.K. We have uh, South Korea, China. Very cool. Australia yeah. soon. So. It's cool. It's exciting. Jalen from Indy. Hello? Jalen, this is Gary Vee on your Ask Gary Vee show with Pedro Erp. Hello? J- hey, Jalen? 
Jalen? Oh, uh, one second. Hey, Jalen, it's Gary V. Oh, what's up, Gary V? How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. Great, brother. What's your question? Hey, Gary, I, um, this is crazy, man. I put my number in here yesterday. I didn't. I was optimistic about it. This is crazy. Life is um, good, man. But my question is, I was wondering, I'm 18 right now, and I skipped out on going to college only because I knew skills was the way to go instead of, instead of going and trying to get a degree. Okay. And right now, I feel like my, my talent and where my skill lies is in sales and whatnot. Okay. But in the future, I want to go and I want to help build businesses. I want to go and build a foundation. And I'm in a great company right now. I work for Lee Filter. We're the largest gutter protection company in the nation. Okay. And I, and I do event marketing, which I'm good at it. Hands down, I'm really good at it. Within the next year or two, I can be a manager in the company. But I just don't feel like that's what I necessarily want to do. The company's making crazy amounts of money already. And I want to help somebody build something than work in something that's already been built, you know? Well, is that because you want a bigger piece of the pie because the company's smaller and you can see that you can have a bigger impact and a bigger piece of the pie? Or are you just altruistic about this and want to help the small man? I, I feel it's a bit of both because one day I want to be super wealthy in life and have it all. But at the same time, I guess it's just like, it would be more satisfying to go and win it knowing that you helped build it. Yep. Then I have it where hey, someone talks. Hey, Jalen, yeah. do you know the quickest way to not be super wealthy in life is to have the goal of being super wealthy in life? <laughs> and I mean this, man. I want you to win, and you know me. You're not calling because you don't know who I am. I, I give you a, I'm giving you a huge piece of advice. I love the concept of having an impact because I think that's a driver. Just take it from an old dude like me. It's super smart to not making being wealthy the KPI because what it's gonna do is it's gonna deploy at some point impatience and shortcuts which will then become the vulnerability to the wealth. Yeah, gotcha. You promise? Yeah, I, I gotcha. And one more question for you. Yeah, yep. It's like, how do you find like those the people that'll get you there, like, as in, with my point on, yep. like, find those companies that I can help them build up um, yep. and just yep. make an impact yep. on. How would I find that? You know, to me, that's super easy. Wherever you want to live, you just start Google searching and Facebook searching and just doing homework, right? Laying in bed at 10 o'clock at night for three hours and just searching all the businesses around, seeing who the owners are, seeing if they're on social media, then getting a flavor for their feel. And the same way you discovered me and you're like, oh, okay, I'm about that guy. We share vibes. Maybe there's some lawyer or some or somebody selling you know, some brooms or has a startup slime company or a craft beer company. Like, it's, it's very easy, it's called Google. Google the businesses around the place you wanna live, do the research on who the founders are, find the founders on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, follow them, get a read, and then start reaching out to them and seeing if you can provide them value. Definitely, thank you. You're welcome, Jim. Pedro, let's get another one. Pedro, for you, when you, when you hear that kind of narrative, you know, what has been your relationship with finances versus ambition versus the work? How's it worked for you? Totally agree with you, Gary. I think I mean money is always a consequence, right? I usually when people ask me this question, I, I, I tell them three things, right? One, find the thing that you're passionate about, figure out if you're good at it or not, yeah, right? If, a, if you have the DNA. I mean, I used to play volleyball when I was a kid and clearly didn't have the DNA, right? So I, I, exactly. And then the third thing is, you know, that thing that you found that you're passionate about, that you have the DNA to do it or not, that is going to take to happiness in life. You sure. Know? The, the, I, I think it's an important thing, the whole passion versus skill set. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, pe- like people are passionate about a lot of things and then they try to force and trick themselves that they're a great singer. Yeah. And then they end up on like those TV shows where and, we make fun and, of them. And a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs that are, that we're attracting, you know, to our, to our VC and things yes. like that. One of the reasons that they come is that these guys really want to have a big impact in the world. And you know, as an entrepreneur, how hard sometimes it is to make an impact, right? Sometimes people are worried about, have to be worried about funding, about payroll, whatever. What we try to do is to keep you know, the original vision, the passion, everything that the guy that has that will take him there. And we try to facilitate the thing that the guy shouldn't her, be. A, you don't want her to lose 
what got her there in the first place Not by at the all. next chapter. That, that, that discussion a bit on Goose Island. You know, for yeah. us, it was going to be kind of stupid. I mean, we uh, we went there and did a transaction with all these craft partners because in terms of creativity, of passion, yeah. and things like that, they were doing an amazing job. Yes. So our job there is much more, what, how can I help you? And be there when they call. Exactly, exactly. And don't listen to jerk-offs like Andy. <laughs> keep, it, keep it going, Andy. Let's get to the next question. Those are the I, consumers I that right. keep us honest. I get it. That's true. It's true. And you got to respect those consumers. I respect Andy. For sure. I don't like him very much. Uh, who's this, Andy? Danny. I know City. Jersey? Yeah. Damn it. Danny? Hello? Danny, this is Gary Vee, and you're on the Ask Gary Vee Show with Pedro Air. Gary, what's up, man? Life is good, man. How are you? Say hello to Pedro. I'm good. Hey, Pedro. Hi, man. How are you? Gary. First of all, I want to thank you for the advice of saying that every company should be a media company. My product, I, I have an alcoholic beverage product, and it sits on the shelf, and all my competitors are billion-dollar companies, and we're beating them because it's simply because of your advice. Well, it's, it's because you're executing on the advice, so that makes me super happy. That's what this is all about, and I'm thrilled. What kind of, what kind of alcoholic product is it? It, it's a flavored malt beverage. Uh, my question is actually for Pedro. Um, I own a brewery be. right on the beach of Ocean City, Maryland. Um, what I've noticed is the enormous demand for clean labels and healthy ingredients in alcoholic products. Um, even though you would assume that alcoholic drink to be inherently unhealthy, uh, we responded to the demand by distributing a flavored malt beverage called Hoop Tea, which uses organic sweeteners, natural tea leaves, and uh, low alcohol content. Um, the brand is on fire in coastal beach areas, but is this unique to the beach because people won't look good, or is this a universal, like, global trend? Man, we, we have seen this trend, uh, you know, all over the place, sort of better, better for you, uh, you know, brands. Actually, we have that even in our core business impacting. If you take a look at the brand that grew the most for the past two years in the U.S., Michelob Ultra. That's right. 2.6 grams, you know, of carbs, 90 calories, and things like that. We are investing a lot in this space, so we just announced, uh, you know, the acquisition of Highball which is an organic energy drink. You know, people have this perception that energy drinks are not, are not healthy and this organic fair trade and all of that. that. We have seen this cross categories, you know, CPGs and, and, and things like that. This is really the, the trend. You're absolutely right. I mean, alcohol per se, uh, you know, in moderation is not necessarily bad for you, uh, you know, but there are, there are a lot of um, other things in terms of gluten-free, organic, whatever that people are looking for. And there's, there's absolutely a space for that. So congratulations on a business, man. Hey, Danny, I, you know what I would say, I'm also looking at this. I don't, think, I don't think people understand what humans are about. We're about living as long as possible. And as we get data and as we get trends, we do them. There's a reason everybody's trying to do some. 30 years ago, most Americans didn't think about their workout regimen. Like, they just right. didn't. There was a reason that Jack LaLanne and like, and you know, Simmons were like these characters. Like, it was like, it was a rarity. There was a sub, like, definitely nobody who was fortunate enough to be born with a body type that wasn't overweight. Just didn't cross their mind. Now, you don't know anybody under 25 that, or under 35, or under 45 that isn't think, or under 50. I mean, it's just, it's natural to think, what am I doing to make my body better? The food trends, the things we're putting in our bodies, um, and this is why I'm so passionate about meditation, because I think it's gonna be next, the mind and the brain, and that's the next 20 year frontier. Yeah. But I don't think it's a fad, bro, that people want to, want to be healthier. What, you, what every brand has to be careful of is the fad pomegranate, is the fad acai, is the fad the ingredient, but the mindset of being good to the environment, being healthy, are things you're gonna be able to trade on for the rest of your life, Danny. Right, gotcha, gotcha. And I think the other thing that I heard in your question, how much time have you spent outside of beach culture? Are you so in the early stages that you're stuck there that you haven't been able to kind of get out and about and get a feel of what the brand could possibly do in rural areas or urban areas or middle America or different things of that nature? Are you just in your bubble at this point because it's early? No, I mean, at this point, we're only a year old and we're in seven states, distributing to seven states, so it's on fire and it seems to be just a trend that, like you said, just human nature and not just a, a fad. I mean, the name is good too, right? Like, you're going off a cultural, like, vibe, so, like, it's cool, man. I'm, that's really, really awesome, man. Yeah, keep pumping content. It is absolutely your disproportionate advantage. Your competitors are spending money on dumb shit like billboards and print and television commercials and what you need to be doing is exactly what you're doing. Well, Gary, do you think the billion dollar companies are gonna jump on this and say, 
you know, because I, I literally live at the beach and I drive a Volkswagen bus and all that. But do you think these billion dollar companies are going to wake up and say, hey, you know what? We need an authentic brand story and we can compete with these little guys gnawing at our ankles here. Yes. Um, do you think they're going to yes, I do. invest in that? Yes, I do. But like, you know, look, I call you guys the X, Y, and Zs and the big brands the A and Bs. I think there is a knowledge at the biggest levels now that, wait a minute, the death of a thousand cuts it's not like Procter & Gamble is as worried about Unilever only anymore. They're like, wait a minute, what about this direct-to-consumer Lola tampon business that's exploding? What about you know the next toothpaste? Colgate's not as worried about Procter as they are you know, two gals in Tennessee making an organic-based toothpaste that's $6, $9 a tube direct-to-consumer. Or, hey Alexa, buy my toothpaste. Like All these trends are happening. I think they're aware of it, right? But I also think right. that they're slow to it because they think... Alexa, buy this. Um, I think that what they're doing is they're slow to spend the monies in the right place. And the thing that I'm doing with, you know, Pedro's brother company, like ABI, is I'm trying to get those clients to spend more money on Instagram and Facebook and the underpriced attention influencers and Alexa creative and podcast and audio than on television or, or billboards. And as soon as they wake up, which is gonna be forced on them, the more Lord and Taylors goes out of business, the more Toys R Us goes out of business, the more a food brand that nobody could have ever thought goes out of business in three years and they're like, what the fuck? They're gonna go there from defense, Danny. They're gonna, be, they're gonna go there by right. defense. They're not gonna go there from offense. Walmart, in its offense, back to disrupting yourself and putting yourself out of business, Walmart should have bought Amazon. But right. they didn't. Gotcha. Got it? And now it's over. So that's the punchline. Now, do you think they'll be able to? And by the way, for everybody who doesn't follow up, story? of course they can, Danny, because they're going to do what they what these guys did with Goose Island. I'm going to do it too. Like everybody smart will do it. Buy something authentic and leave them the fuck alone. Hey, oh, bro, so let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me, Danny, let me ask you a question. If Pedro here offers you 25 million bucks and it changes your life and he says, and I'm gonna leave you alone, I have a funny thing to tell you. You're gonna take it and you're gonna be authentic. Gotcha, but, gotcha. But if he doesn't, if he says, we're gonna pay you 25 million, we're gonna let you do your thing in year two, but then I, Pedro, I'm gonna get on the board in year three, and we're gonna replace you as CEO in year four, and that's how this is gonna work out. That's how these companies lose their soul. Yeah. Steven Absolutely. Ross bought a big chunk of VaynerMedia. He has no fucking say. We didn't lose our soul. Gotcha. So of course they can be yeah. authentic. They've got a big fucking fat wallet, and if they're smart and they leave you alone, then that's the game, right? Now, do you know where the vulnerability is? Now you have $25 million and you lose your fucking mind and you start partying and spending money on dumb shit and you don't care about the brand anymore. So that's the other vulnerability even if you leave them alone. Right, right. So, so money, money's not gonna change you, Danny. It's gonna expose you. You're either a good dude or a douchebag behind the scenes. We just don't know until we give you a lot of money. Understood. That's the game. Thanks, brother. Thanks for listening. Good luck. Hopefully, Pedro gives you hey, $10 million. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Right. <laughs> let's get another one. That was perfect. Super interesting. Yeah. And, and for you, let's get another phone number in here. For you, it must be interesting because, like, fuck, you guys have all these people looking for these things, and, like, every day, yeah. there's a Danny popping up in Ocean City, Maryland yeah. with a, you know, urban or a tea Lord. malt Thanks business. Lord, yeah. It's just, there's so much going on. Yeah. It's impossible. And if, you, to, if today's world, you try to innovate from, from within, you can't. Right, there are so many guys like you know Danny out there, you know, creative, passionate, driven, and whatever. Hungry. The best thing you can do is basically to provide the ecosystem and the infrastructure that these guys right. need to succeed. Right. That's right. It's be the iPhone platform for the app developers Absolutely. instead of trying to make every app. Absolutely. Absolutely. Does that make sense to you? Trying to help you out here. I'm trying to help the kids. Who's this? Hello, this is Ben. Ben, this is Gary Vee, and you're on the Ask Gary Vee Show with Pedro Erp. Gary Vee and Pedro, my two favorite guys. How are you? Ben, Very are good, you? Ben. Well, I, I love to I love to piggyback on Danny. Guess what? We make we make a craft uh, we make a craft product as well. That's great. What is it? It's called Disco Lemonade. So Dis talk about a name, right? Disco Lemonade. We like it already. Yep. What's it about? Yep. So we are the uh, we are the first spirit based canned cocktail made by a farm distillery on the East Coast. 
I mean, that was incredible, first of all. <laughs> I, I, love, I love when people's passion is to be first. They'll literally be like, we are the first canned yogurt in Iowa run by a redhead individual. <laughs> the, yeah, I love that, man. That's awesome. Okay, and so where, where are you on the East Coast? So we are, we're, we're, um, we're produced in upstate New York in a small town called Casanova, just outside of Syracuse. Okay, very and we good. Have, we, we have nine different distributors throughout New York State, and very similar to Danny, we're, we're, we're just exploding. We're, we're getting into seven other states starting Q1 2018, and that's where we're going to be distributed. We're crushing it. So we're, we're, we're looking at your Facebook. Obviously, I've seen you interacting with me on content in the last couple of years as well. And so why do you love Pedro? Because you like his wallet? No, not at all, actually. Uh, the reason I'm, I wanted to talk to Pedro is because we're expanding so quickly, and we're not going to be on, the, on somebody like like Pedro's radar. That's just not that's just not a viable play for us. My question to Pedro is: He's the ABC level, like you describe it, Gary. Where can I find the next strategic partner for me? Somebody that's doing you know ten, twelve, fourteen thousand cases next year. Where can I find that next level strategic partner? Because I'm not getting to Pedro. Yeah, but but I'm not sure you're not getting to to Pedro Ben. I mean, the, the three things that we take a look for partners, you know, first and foremost, we'll take a look at founders. You know, really doesn't matter the size of their business. You know, sometimes we, uh, you know, we we did a we did a you know one acquisition uh, last year uh, that actually was you know five hundred thousand dollars in sales, right? So we take tiny. a look. At, yeah, it's tiny. I mean, we, and, we, and we've done we've done some of them. Uh, so the first thing is, you know, we we really take a look at the founder and say, is this the guy that is actually going to create the next $1 billion uh, business or not, right? Uh, the second one, we take a look at the product to see how truly differentiated the product is. Uh, and the third thing is, you know, what's the size of the opportunity, right? What's the size of the market that you guys are going? What are the financials and things like that? So one, one thing that, that you guys should be a, a, bit, uh, a bit careful about is not to spread yourselves too thin. At the beginning, you know, guys like, uh, you know, what we are trying to take a look at is how much traction are you guys able to get? Because sometimes it's very easy for you to spread yourself too thin and go to 52 states and sell, you know, half Over a case, a half a case per at, month. At youth. I, I much rather take a look at a guy that is, you know, within a, a certain consumer demographic, you know, getting loads of traction, load of cases getting out of, you know, certain retail stores rather than someone that it's, you know, spread, you know, too thin, right? So, so that's a little bit how we, how we, we take a look at things. Ben, what's interesting is the Disco Lemonade thing was out there, but you kind of created your own formula and kind of made it your brand, right? You like, you rode a wave that was actually out there, which I love. We did, and, and actually what did, we, we tried to grab it, and again, take your advice. I, I, used to sit in the, I used to sit in the back of my distillery and listen to your content, and I found you through Stunwin. Like, that's like the whole story. We just started a podcast, we're turning ourselves, much like Danny, I, I, gotta, I gotta reach out to Danny, sounds like my, my, my spirit animal. You know, we're turning into a, uh, a podcast. We're doing all the stuff that we're supposed to be doing that you tell us to do. But again, it's on, it's on the execution. But yeah, we saw, uh, we saw the Disco Lemonade kind of wave, and now we're just grabbing it. And what I'm hearing Pedro saying is look for the deeper market penetration to show these guys that it grabs bro. traction rather, bro. Than, rather than spread ourselves too thin. For sure. Ben, that is, look, remember how I always talk about look what I do, not what I say? Like yep. Vayner has been, you know, like fast and slow. Like we've gotten very deep in our crafts. There's been a lot of other opportunities. Pedro can even tell you like, we don't take every opportunity yeah. because we'll lose, we'll lose. I mean, I've been registered to do business in Singapore for three years. So obviously I came back from Singapore last week and I'm talking about it more now, but the license has been in place. I wanted to go, but I kind of took a step back and said, mm, I'm gonna be stretched thin. I don't have the right pieces in place, you know? And so, and so you gotta be careful because when you overexpand, you can be really unsuccessful for a very long time. Similar, Ben, to your Buffalo Bills, who've not made the playoffs in two decades. <laughs> but we're crushing you guys this year, aren't we? <laughs> well, yeah, that's fine, but in a macro, you have not made the playoffs literally in over 20 years. We, we absolutely suck, Gary. Ben, when I tell you this, if you're a Buffalo Bills fan, you have actually never made the playoffs since smartphones have been around. That is correct. You've never made the playoffs since YouTube, Facebook, and I mean, this is like, you guys, I mean, there are literally kids in college that grew up in Buffalo who have never been alive during a Bills playoff game. That's why my 11-year-old son roots for the Seahawks. <laughs> I got it, buddy. Awesome, man. I wish you well. Thank you very much. I'd you love to it. have you on the podcast with James Altisher, too. I'll email you guys. Okay, please do. 
Yeah, that's a whole nother problem. I, forget, me, I was on James Altucher's podcast. I think we promised to be like on every podcast on earth. So me and Tyler have some real work to do. Pedro, I think that's exactly right. Depth versus width. For sure. And I think that it's exciting to say things like we're in 52 states. Yeah. And it's, you know, I talk a lot about you can impress the 99% but what you want to do is impress the one percent. Exactly. You know, I said this to your your buddy Lucas the other day. I was like, look, I don't care about what's going on right now. I'm going to be historically correct, and I'll be I'll be correct with the one percent. Yeah. When I hear expansion, I know when everybody was listening. For all you listeners, it's going to be fun. When you heard the expansion, you're like, hey, it's funny what I know went through both of our minds. Like, mm. that's just interesting to yeah. me. That's interesting to me. That something that seems so right to the masses is so wrong to the practitioners. Yeah, when we take a look at two businesses that are small, you know, we don't take a look at the, the revenue that the guys generate. We are looking for signals that when we expand this business, it can be a billion dollar business. Yeah, right? what happens when we put it into our machine? Exactly. And a hundred, a 500,000 a a 500, business, you know, th- spread throughout the U.S. Not the same thing as a 500, you know, thousand dollar business in a city. That's know? right. So when you create that multiplier versus 500,000 across 27 states, exactly. you're like, eh. You know, focus, focus is key at the early stage, for sure. And, and, and by the way, for all the entrepreneurs listening, focus is not only key, it's a hell of a lot easier. You know, Ben's got an 11-year-old son who's a Seahawks fan, which is ridiculous, Ben. That's bad parenting. You do not <laughs> let your kids become bandwagon fans of teams that are completely across the country, but that's for another day. Uh, you know, it's a lot easier for him to win, you know, the upper New York Pennsylvania, like you're, you're in control. You can drive to that customer two hours away. And I, and I think people make that mistake. They don't have the infrastructure to service the distribution model. Absolutely. They get commoditized. Absolutely. Yeah, who's this? Dustin. Dustin. Persistent. All right, Dustin. Your persistent is go- persistence is going to be paid off. Dustin, it's Gary Vee and you're in the Ask Gary Vee Show with Pedro. Holy shit. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Good man, what's your question? Um, I run uh, a business with my fiance. It was uh, her business before, but she was also teaching at the time. Okay. Um, that was when I left my job at the liquor store where I had body and I was part owner there. And I was laying around, wasn't doing anything, so we decided to open up our own shop. I see it. I'm looking, uh, I'm looking at it. And she finally, she's not teaching anymore. This We're finally both doing this full time. And it's just really hard. Like, she wants more of the um, family work balance in favor of the kids as opposed to this. But we both want to keep growing. I mean, and the kids. I, are, need, I mean, and the kids are cute. I mean, this this little like bird outfit that the little one's wearing <laughs> is so ridiculously adorable. I think it just melted my eyes and heart. So I understand where she's coming from. Um, but. But you got to pay the bills. It's hard, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's just hard to like, and I want her to have that, and I of want to work more. But it just we're always kind of like button heads. So can I? Can um, I? I think you guys need to make a decision that I think works for people in this scenario, which is right now you guys are caught in being half pregnant. You're in the middle, uh-huh. and so I think you guys need to have a convert. First of all, it's all communication, and you guys are coming from different energies, which is right. I think what you need to do is pick a side, aka. Either you waver slash move over to the other side and say, listen, honey, fine, but let's wrap our heads around a $53,000 a year income and let's make sure we live in a studio apartment. You know, and I'm going to assume, you know, Rich, is it Richmond, Kentucky, or what did it say? Yeah, yeah. Richmond, Kentucky. I'm going to assume, you know, good news, Richmond, Kentucky rents are not the same way that New York rents are. And Well, I mean, I, we, I, mean, I have, when, whenever I was at the liquor store uh, and I bought in, I bought a house, I mean, at the time, I was doing good and kind of got screwed over by the other owners. And I get it. I lost a ton of money. I get it. So listen, life's simple. You live within your means if you want to be able to make it palpable and if as long as you're happy, you're good. What you can't do is, there's a great Russian saying, you can't put your ass on two toilets, right? There is no English yeah. or American version of this, but it's how I think about it. As long as your wife is thrilled with what huge work-life balance creates, which is less money, right? As long, mm-hmm. as long as there's not delusion, as long as she's like, honey, why are we not doing 380,000 a year? It's because we're going pumpkin picking every fucking Saturday, honey, right? <laughs> like this is real life. 
as long as you guys are cool with 57,000, 112,000 and live within it and you're happy, mazel tov. Or she comes to your side and you say, let's go hard for three years. Our kids aren't going to How do I get her to that side? Well, you could call her bluff. (laughs) I'm a big fan of calling bluff, right? You can Mm -hmm. get her to come to that side because you could go to the other side and her side and say, are you, how much does the business do right now? You guys are doing it full time, right? Yes. Good. How much does it? Well, last year, last year with her doing it just part time in sales, we did over 250,000. That's a good fucking start. I'm excited right now. So how, okay, how much profit did you guys make on that? Uh, I would say 30. So, after everything. Right, so you're not making that much margin on the stuff and then you've got overhead, right? Yeah, on, on the products, I mean, I would say for the most part we at least make 50 on most of the products. So I mean, we the make fuck, everything so, in-house. Right, so where the fuck did all the profit go if you're making 50% margin on 250? I mean, because we, we, we bought new machines, we bought a lot of new so you took, stuff. Right, so you took capital expense yeah. up front. Okay, so yes. what do you think's gonna happen? Th- that was last year, we're almost done with this year, or is last year this year, or what's happening this year? Uh, I mean, just getting ready for this this holiday rush and trying to duplicate that whole year in these next two months. Okay, I mean, look. I, I, think mean, we, I think we can. I mean, look, there's two separate things here. There's the financial and there's the emotional. Mm-hmm. When I hear 250 part-time and now you're going to do it and I can feel your fire and she's going to do it full-time and obviously the baby and the family, I get it, but like, sounds like that you might in some weird way, be able to put your ass on two toilets. It seems conceivable that you're gonna be able to live a very nice living potentially and and be able to have some work-life balance. Now you just have to figure out, is your ambition okay with that? I make tens of millions of dollars a year, but it's not enough. That's a problem, because mm-hmm. that means my ambition hasn't been fed. Mainly because my ambition is not fed by the money. And so that needs to become the next question. Do you just love working and building? Because then it's never about the money. You know, when I was making 47,000 a year or I make 10 million a year, it feels like the same shit. I just love the game. And like it's not about the money, so that was never the issue. The issue is I will die and suffocate if I'm not working. So you just have to get real with yourself or it's that, a- That's how I feel, because I, I, I need to just have like a structure, a uh, pattern of every day. Otherwise, my head's just kind of lost. So you guys can't agree on the schedule? No, it's, it's just we have a lot of extracurriculars with the kids and then just with everything else and it's just like when we get into it and all of a sudden we have to stop and then it's just hard getting back into work. I mean, we work around the clock. I mean, our house is a mile away from our shop. So, I mean, we can work at any time. It, it's just that it's just for you. It's one, for of you. Us, one of us always has to stop, to go yeah. do this, and yeah. then come back. Yeah. So... You either are, and are, are you guys not okay with infrastructure like a full time nanny or babysitter based on the top line revenue you're making? Uh, full time, it, it's kind of we wouldn't be able to do that right now. Got it. So look, man, uh, honestly, this is the right answer for everybody, and this is just what it is. It's grossly over communicating with your partner and having good mm-hmm. days and bad, or eventually it does not work out. I mean, that's, it's real life. There's a reason people get divorces. They, you know, there's a reason. And so you're gonna have to start making decisions. Are you chemically structured in a world? It scares me how much I would break if I didn't have the support of my wife to empower me to do what I do. I mean, just real life. So, But mm-hmm. the way to get to a better place is like any relationship. I would highly recommend the following. Don't let things bubble up to when you blow up because you kept it all inside over communicate daily so you don't have to communicate feverishly every three weeks. Yeah. You just gotta get it out of the system, the frustration. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's no right answer, you know that, right? Oh, I know that. <laughs> there's her truth, there's your truth, and you do the best you can. And then what you also realize is, if you guys keep chipping away, maybe in year three it is better because maybe there is the dollars now for full-time support and now she can be with the kids as much as she wants and if you don't want to, there's a second hands there that kind of appeases you being able to stay always on in your track. She needs to deploy empathy, you need to deploy empathy. Both of you have to be the bigger man and woman in every situation and that's how you win, that's how relationships win. But I'll, I'll, gi- you. I'll give you a good one, man, and this has worked for me. I'll actually give you something tangible, brother. The the next 10 times, and not huffing and puffing or rolling eyes, the next 10 times you guys discuss, 
Be the bigger man and appease the situation. See if that creates pressure or a framework where she starts feeling obligated to do the same. I'll try it. Yeah, don't go with the fine. Be like, honey, yeah. you know, go with the, honey, I get it. You know what, cool, I got this. Like go in, guns a blazing positive, eight, nine times in a row on the next friction points and see if that created a structure where she's guilted or compelled to do the same for you. Okay. Let me know how it goes. All right. All right, brother. Thank you. Take care. Getting to some Dr. Phil shit around here. <laughs> Pedro, what do you want to end with? Anything? Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, I think again, you know, we are we are always looking for amazing entrepreneurs like the ones that are, that. Are, that was fun for you are, in the middle. Yeah, yeah, You're for like, sure. I'm gonna get some action out of here. So uh, you know, entrepreneurs are people that actually want to be entrepreneurs, but you know, they 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 are fine having that. You know, in a big organization, we're always looking mm-hmm. for that. So uh, if they want to, you know, go to our site. And what about you? Know, you? And, and w- yeah, we'll get we'll link all that up. But what about for you? Like out of the business context. Yeah, I think you excited about the World Cup? Yeah, I, I'm how's, very excited about the World Brazil Cup. Are you coming on? I know. How's Brazil going to do? I think Brazil's going to do well, man. Brazil is, is, on, is on a roll. Did you guys as a company and as an organization, as a, like you're disappointed the U.S. didn't make it because you feel it's slowed down some of the momentum of soccer Yeah, but growth? a bunch of our other countries, uh, you know. Uh, well, I know that in a macro. Yeah. But, what's your, but, you know, America is such a beacon of society. Yeah, of course. I mean, and soccer was, uh, was actually gaining some traction here in the U.S., right? Sure. So it would be great to have the U.S. in. Didn't happen, but it's still going to be a very exciting time. And bad about with your time in the U.S., have you picked up any sports here that you used to not root for? Not yet, man. I'm, I'm running the New York Marathon this weekend, so let's you see are. how it goes. Yeah. You got it? Does it look like I'm running a marathon? No. Well, you know what's so funny? Fit? That's what fucks me up with the marathon. Like, all these people that look completely out of shape. Is that, the is that me? I don't know. I didn't really take a good look. But, like, I've seen, like, now I always think anybody can run a marathon. Yeah. Because I have, like, five or six buddies that look like they're going to die of a heart attack at 37, crush the marathon. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you uh, know, like, I'm, uh, it's completely blown my mind. I'm not sure I train my body too much, but I train my mental discipline. On a very you know, serious note, do you think you got it? Yeah, I think so. Let's because see. Because why? What's the last thing you've run and how'd it go? No, I ran uh, New York. I ran uh, London last year uh, in four hour 20. So hopefully I'll do a little bit better. That's it's not it. too good. But Is that see. bad? I have no, I have no confidence for <laughs> marathons. Just finishing it seems accomplished. So literally nothing. No hockey, no basketball. No, well, basketball. Do you like basketball? I'm, I'm trying to, to support the, the New York Jets for you, man. But it's Thank been you. tough, right? right yeah. I get it, brother. All right. <laughs> Pedro, uh, question of the day. Every time we have a guest, yeah. they get to ask the audience a question of the day. I would use this strategically to get a lot of customer feedback. Fire away. Any question you want. What's yeah. your favorite color? What's your favorite size? No, what's your favorite I, beer? I don't give a fuck. Whatever you want, do it. No, I think what big companies can do better to attract this amazing entrepreneurial talent that is out there. I think that's, uh, and that's, one, that's, one that, uh, that's one that we are, we are always thinking about so we can attract all these amazing entrepreneurs you know, to, to build great things with us and make an impact in the world. Love it, brother. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Great to see Thank you. Thank you. You keep asking questions. We'll keep answering them.